Meeting of the Board of Regents of Texas Tech University System is now called to order. The board will continue in open session and meet as a committee of the whole in the meeting of the board. And please note, Regent Carrick Davis is participating online. Chancellor Mitchell, President Hawkins, actually, uh, Mr. Tuplett, President Johnson, President Scovenick, President Lang, and President Rice Spearman, will you please present your introductions and recognitions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this morning, Mr. Chairman, I have three, recommend, uh, three uh, recognitions. We have with us today Senator Charles Perry. No, wait, did Perry come in? Uh, there he is. Uh, Senator Charles Perry, Representative Dustin Burroughs, and Representative John Frulo. If you three please stand for us. We're fortunate to have an extraordinarily strong West Texas delegation within the Texas State Legislature. And these three gentlemen play an important role in our West Texas delegation. They're dedicated supporters and passionate advocates for not just our universities here in Lubbock, but actually for all the universities across our entire Texas Tech system, as well as higher education across the entire state. And that's critically important because as I've said before, we've got to stick together out here in West Texas. So we are talking about this yesterday. There are more state representatives in the city of Houston than there are in all of West Texas. There are more state senators in Houston than there are in all of West Texas. So our delegation has to be strong. State appropriations <clears throat> make up about 25% of our overall annual budget to the Texas Tech system. We're constantly competing against our colleagues in other parts of the state for this funding. And as I mentioned, Houston has more elected officials than we have in all of this uh, half the state combined. All three of these gentlemen have been extraordinarily helpful during their tenures in the legislature. And there are countless examples that I could share, but I'm gonna give you just a few. Throughout the process of making the vet school in Amarillo a possibility, they were all three extremely helpful. Throughout the entire process of getting the dental school in El Paso, they were all three extremely helpful. This was huge for our 2019 session. Their dedication was especially evident this year as they spent an additional 90 days in Austin for special sessions after the regular session concluded. As you know, this legislative year was an unusual one with the ongoing pandemic, additional questions regarding the state budget, as well as uncertainty about the distribution of federal funds. Their work was instrumental to all that we were able to achieve during both the regular as well as the special sessions. Most notably, and most visibly, for this meeting was the addition of Midwestern State University uh, to the Texas Tech University system. All three legislators were crucial to the success of our partnership with MSU. During the regular session, their efforts helped to secure funding for our top legislative priorities at each of our universities. Cybersecurity and Artificial Intelligence Center at Angelo State University. Mission-specific formula funding for our research enterprise at Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center. And additional higher education initiatives across our system, like the statewide investment of $380 million for enrollment growth in higher education. During the third special session, which ended in late October, and keep that in mind, session supposed to have ended by the end of May, but they continued to uh, get called down until the end of October. The TTU system received more than $300 million in funding for priority infrastructure projects. In addition to this, an additional $50 million for student support, academic and research excellence at Texas Tech University was made possible thanks to their efforts. Their work is vital to what we do, and it is impacting generations of students to come who will be workforce ready graduates and leaders in their communities and our state and beyond. Now very specifically we have here Senator Charles Perry who represents the 28th Senate District of Texas, a lifelong West Texan and part of a proud part of the Red Raider family. He earned his Bachelor of Business Administration in Accounting and Management Information Systems from Texas Tech University in 1984. His wife of more than 37 years, Jacqueline, earned her bachelor's in secondary education from Texas Tech as well in 1983. His son, Matthew, earned her bachelor's in counselor education in 2013 and a master's in education in 2017, both from Texas Tech. His daughter, Jordan, earned a bachelor's in early childhood development from Texas Tech in 2009. Senator Perry served in the House from 2010 until 2014 and then moved to the Senate in 2014. He currently chairs the Senate Com uh, Committee on Water and Agriculture. 
Representative Dustin Burroughs was born and raised in Lubbock. He earned his MBA and law degree, both from Texas Tech, in 2004. He is currently an attorney with the Liggett Law Firm. He's been a member of the House since 2015 and represents <coughs> House District 83. He currently chairs the House Calendars Committee, and he and his wife Elizabeth have three boys, Davis, Whitby, and Henry. The three of them are not yet old enough to attend Texas Tech, but I'm sure they will. <laughs> Representative John Frulo is the owner of Midtown Printing and Graphics here in Lubbock. He represents House District 84 and has served in the House for seven terms, first being elected in 2010. For the last two sessions, he has served on the Higher Education Committee. Uh, he recently announced that he will not run for re-election, and we would like to thank him for his dedicated service to our universities as well as to the citizens of Lubbock. He has two grown sons, John Michael and Braden. Please join me in thanking Senator Perry, Representative DeBurrows, and Representative Frulo for their dedication to higher education and their, uh, their dedication to their constituents, as well as their support of the Texas Tech University system. And Mr. Chairman, we have a small token of our appreciation for each one of them. So let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, Chancellor. Good morning. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce to you two of our uh, lead researchers within the uh, Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center. The state of Texas established the Cancer Prevention and Research Institute of Texas several years ago in an effort to support cancer research across the state of Texas. Um, we began seeking those funds in an effort to build cancer research across our West Texas community. As you know, one of our goals in the coming years, we actually have two. Number one is to build a research corridor that reaches from Amarillo through Lubbock, through the Permian Basin, down to Abilene, and we are in the early steps of establishing that. Our second goal is to reach NCI designation, and that's Can National Cancer Institute designation. And it requires us to have so much research and millions of dollars per year. These are examples today of two gentlemen who are helping us build the foundation for that. The first individual I would like to introduce is Dr. Patrick Reynolds. And Dr. Reynolds, if you'll stand. He is the director of our TTUHSC School of Medicine Cancer Center, as well as the South Plains Oncology Consortium and the Childhood Oncology Group Childhood Cancer Repository. Dr. Reynolds was named a recipient of a Texas Regional Excellence in Cancer Award, TREC Award, which provided $6 million to fund a new Center of Excellence in Cancer Developmental Therapeutics at our HSC. The CEPRIC grant will support multiple faculty projects here in Lubbock and in the School of Pharmacy in Amarillo and Abilene, allowing us to recruit new faculty to our HSC, as well as to be able to provide some core resources for cancer research. This includes support for junior faculty members to develop their research career. We have identified four individuals who will receive this, two on the Lubbock campus, one in Amarillo, and one in Abilene. So Dr. Reynolds, thank you. Our second individual that we'll be highlighting today is Dr. Trey Putman. Trey is a professor of pharmacy practice and pharmaceutical sciences for the HSC Jerry H. Hodge School of Pharmacy <clears throat> that is located in Amarillo. Dr. Putman received a core facility support award which supports $3 million to support the purchase of new instrumentation and support core infrastructure for the North Texas Clinical Pharmacology Cancer Corps. 
The support provided by CEPRA will allow this Corps to be better positioned to facilitate translational oncology research by purchasing updated and state-of-the-art mass spectrometers. There are two uh, instruments that he will be purchasing. This is part of a collaboration that Dr. Putman has put together with UT Southwestern. We are co-located across the street from each other on our Dallas campus. Trey is located on that Dallas campus and has established a group of researchers there that work collaboratively with UT Southwestern. Please join me in recognizing both of these individuals. I think this is an example of how when we collaborate, we are able to innovate, transform healthcare, and really raise the stature of the Health Sciences Center in the area of research. Thank you very much. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our new Chief Financial Officer, Guadalupe Valencia Skane. Guadalupe. She goes by Lupe. Uh, this is a result of a national search, uh, and I'm happy to report that I actually stole her from UTEP where she was actually the Associate Vice President for Business Affairs. But uh, to give you an idea of, of the trek that she took to get here, she has both her BBA and MBA. She's a certified government financial manager, has over 20 years of experience in academic centers and in finance, uh, having served not only at UTEP previously, but also at the University of Alaska, University of Arizona, uh, and University of Washington as well. I, I, uh, I won't go through all of her accolades, but. Uh, <coughs> What I will say, you can read stuff off paper, but it's really about her leadership. Um, she uh, buys in, <coughs> understands our values-based culture of service, teamwork, advancement, accountability, respect, and integrity. She has a reputation for building teams and investing in others and having a tremendous amount of integrity. Um, she's on the president track for WACUBO. That's the Western Association of College and University Business Officers Annual Conference. Um, and I must say, uh, when you look around the entire system, I want you to think about the talent of all the CFOs at every single institution. By the way, they all happen to be women, by the way. And you're going to have something pretty unique, because while she'll be serving as president of Wakubo and in the national organization, Noel, aren't you? Yeah, Sakubo. So we're going to have two people from the Texas Tech System serving at the national organization leadership at exactly the same time. So uh, besides telling her she'd work with the best president in the system, uh, <laughs> telling Lupe that she'd be working with these talented group of CFOs across the system, uh, and with Gary Barnes as well, really made a difference. So I want to introduce you guys to Lupe. Lupe, welcome up. Let me give you one warning. This guy likes to buy real estate. Watch. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I have a number of introductions this morning. And uh, first, I'd like to, um, can we show the photograph, of the picture of Dr. Uh, Kiesling? Uh, before you, you see a picture of Ernest Kiesling, who recently passed away. Uh, but we're joined today by his wife, Nita, and granddaughter, Christiana. Would you, could you please stand? Um, Dr. Kiesling is an, was an amazing man. He uh, came to Tech in 1969 and um, retired in 2018. Um, during his more than 50 years at Texas Tech, he helped create the Institute for Disaster Research in response to the tornado that hit Lubbock in 1970. That later became known as the National Wind Institute and today is one of the most uh, recognized centers for studying mitigation of storm damage in the United States, if not the world. Um, from observing a tornado in Burnett, Texas in 1972, he got the idea to build above ground shelters to protect people from wind related damage during a tornado. And in 2001, he established the National Storm Shelter Association, serving as its director uh, until 2018. His work earned him the nickname Father of the Safe Room. Um, and he died this past October. <clears throat> um, so sorry. I went, when I went to his funeral, I, I told Grace Hernandez, I want you to go with me because um, no words can convey what an incredible person he was. And at that service, 
His two sons, his daughter, his grandson spoke. And this was a man of enormous faith and love. And we, were, we are so grateful for the way you impacted this community. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, one of the things that I think a lot of folks don't realize is Dr. Kiesling had actually worked with, was it Ted Fujita? Yes. Uh, in establishing what is called the, and that's the Enhanced Fujita Scale. The EF scale that is used for rating tornadoes was developed from the work that was done at Texas Tech because of that storm. And so worldwide, this, this gentleman's had an impact. Um, my, my Lawrence, can I take just a moment? I, I'm sorry. Being the local regent, and when we recognize these people, there's always another story. And may I share something with you about Miss Kiesling, please? As accomplished as her husband was, you'll want to know that she was a leader in the real estate business back before it was cool to have ladies in the real estate business, okay? And she was a, she was a pioneer with Margaret Williams in establishing credibility for females in Lubbock, Texas, in real estate. She's a professional. She handled her duties uh, just flawlessly. And I think it's appropriate, uh, Ms. Kiesling, for us to say thank you to you also. You, you managed t really two careers, your husband's and your own, and you did it in such an elegant fashion. So thank you and congratulations again. Uh, the next person uh, I have the pleasure of introducing is somebody you probably never heard of, Coach Joey McGuire, <laughs> <laughs> who is here today. And I, if, if you knew uh, how many directions this man is being pulled in, I think it says a lot that he is here to, to spend some time with us. He's one of the most recognizable coaches in the state of Texas. Uh, he was a 2020 inductee into the Texas High School Coaches Association Hall of Fame. He won three state championships during his career at Cedar Hill High School. Prior to him going there, they had never won a playoff game. And in 14 years, he took them to 12 consecutive playoff appearances. After that run, he was hired at Baylor to coach tight ends and was eventually promoted to associate head coach in 2019. He is widely considered not only a great coach, but also a great communicator, and he is all about relationships and people. Uh, he and his wife Debbie have two children. His daughter Reagan graduated from Texas Tech in 2018, and she now lives in New York City, and uh, as Coach says, she is a rock star, as is his son Garrett, who's a member of the Carolina Panthers coaching staff. And Coach, could you please come and just make a few comments, uh, if you would? Raider! If that's ever been done. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to be your head coach. Uh, I really appreciate it. I, I take and say that with uh, a great honor and great pride. Uh, I promise you this, I will not let you down. Um, I'm so excited to be here in Lubbock. Uh, Every place that I've gone in Lubbock, we went to Houston, in Midland, the passion of the Red Raider Nation and fans, just uh, everything that I thought Lubbock was, everything that I thought this university was, is 10 times uh, more than what I expected. I mean, it's just so exciting to be a part of this, so exciting. Um, I have some people, I, I know they're going to be introduced, but I got some people to chase our national championship meet judging team. Um, if they've won 16 of them, I got to go to work. Not, not coach. <laughs> coach, you're stealing my thunder. I'm sorry, but God, when you're around national champions and greatness, you, got, you want some of it. I shook every one of their hands. I wanted to rub off. <laughs> um, I will tell you this I've got to meet all the kids, we've got a great roster a great group of uh, students, uh, athletes. Uh, we've got um, a great, I know y'all have been following. Uh, we are hitting the trail running as far as recruiting. We have four officials coming in this weekend. I feel really good about those guys. 
Watching last week and being a part of a 62-yard field goal, uh, I thought Regent Womble was going to catch that field goal after it went through. There is video proof that he's back there uh, <laughs> celebrating. I don't know if it's been out there. It might show later. I don't know. Um, but really impressed with the athletes that we have here. Really excited to be a part of it and what we can do with this team. I will tell you this. You're going to get a guy that's going to pour into these guys I believe in relationships. I believe in loving our students. And uh, I met with a couple guys that they don't have eligibility left, and they were like, well, Coach, I'm not playing next year. And I said, well, here's the deal. You're a Red Raider. I want to make sure you know that you're a Red Raider for life and that you take great pride in what we're about to do here in Lubbock. Again, thank you all very much for the opportunity. Thank you so much for letting me join your family. Uh, again, I promise you, it's going to be a great day to wear the red and black. Wreck them. Uh, Dr. Dr. Skovenick, I'd like to attest to Coach McGuire's ability to recruit. I was indulged last Saturday. I brought my family, part of my family, to the game. and. They met Coach McGuire, which included my three granddaughters, who are t twins are 12, one's eight. And my son and daughter-in-law went to another school down in Austin. And so nevertheless, Coach McGuire captured them and put them on the spot and recruited them for Texas Tech. <laughs> and he did not take no for an answer. <laughs> and he brought closure. So thank you for that, sir. That's good to know. Thank you, Chairman Lewis. Next, I'd like to introduce Eileen Janotis. Eileen uh, has come to Texas Tech as the Senior Director of Communications in our Central Communication and Marketing Office, but she will primarily be focused uh, her efforts in the Office of the Provost. In this role, she will plan and coordinate communications and marketing strategies for the Office of the Provost, including internal communications and enhanced um, communications with the deans and our network of communications around the campus. Eileen joins us from Michigan State University where she oversaw the communications effort in the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources and there she worked very closely with our new provost who came from Michigan State, Ron Hendrick. Eileen, welcome to Texas Tech and Lubbock. Next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Nathaniel Wright. Uh, Dr. Wright is a faculty member in the Department of Political Science, and he also serves as the director of the Master of Public Administration program. Recently, he was appointed as the inaugural assistant dean for strategic initiatives in the College of Arts and Sciences. And in this position, he will spearhead efforts to develop new innovative strategies to build community and industry partnerships. He is an expert in community relations and engagement, and he will lead the development of arts and sciences sponsor programs to better serve our students there through engaged community outreach and opportunities. Nate, thank you for being here today. And, and now the star of the introductions. Um, so I'm very pleased uh, to recognize our most recent group of national champions, the 2021 Meet Judging Team. Uh, could you all stand, please? Um, this is the 16th national title they have won. Uh, they have won three in a row, and only one other institution won three in a row, and guess who that was? Texas Tech. <laughs> and. Um, these are amazing students. After the game the other night, I went over to the arena and, and every, there was a large crowd there waiting to welcome these students. Um, there's a tremendous sense of pride and family feeling in that program uh, and it's a tribute to many people who have supported them. Um, we had three team members, Cassie, Preston, and Caleb, who were selected as All-Americans. Would you please raise your hands? Thank you. Uh, and, um, over the program, the, 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 over the years, this has become the most recognized program in the United States. A lot of that credit goes to Dr. Mark R Miller, Connor McKenzie, and Taylor Schertz, who coach these students. And, um, and so we just want to say again, it never gets old. 
We're so proud of you, and congratulations. And, and the last introduction I want to make is of Gordon Davis, who's here with his wife, Joyce. Gordon and Joyce, could you stand? Probably nobody uh, is more responsible for the meat uh, judging program than Gordon Davis, who's, who began those efforts many years ago. Um, he, he was a member of the Texas Tech faculty, having come, in, I think, here from Tennessee. And he was the coach of our first meat judging national championship team in 1981. And you ought to visit with Gordon someday to, to get a better understanding of where they began on that path to becoming a national championship team. He is the founder and chairman of the CEV Multimedia, a company he built into a leading online technical education platform. Um, at that event the other night, uh, you could just see how much these students value Gordon's relationship. I think they all think of him as a grandfather. Um, and there's a... <laughs> they call him Gordo. <laughs> so, thank you, Gordon and Joyce, for all the support you provided to the Meat, Judging Pro and Meat Science and Meat Judging Program. Chairman, there's a gift for each of you from the meat judging team. The board, each one of you has a, a cutting board from the, the meat sciences program as a gift. Thank you. Oh, yeah, and by the way, uh, where's Christina Butts? Tell them about ASU. Lawrence, may I say a word about Gordon and Joyce also, please? <laughs> Their engagement with Texas Tech is, is without question and unconditional. But they're also very, very generous in the community also. Time and time again, when needs arise, they respond. And I, I want to say thank you to them for their generosity and for their willingness to not just be singular in their engagement. It's community-wide, and it's, it's not unnoticed and not unappreciated. Thank you very much. And that concludes my introductions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Scovener. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have uh, one I would like to recognize. Uh, Dr. Charles Chuck Boltina, Associate Professor of Management in the Dillard College of Business Administration. Dr. Boltina was recently named one of the 2021 Piper Award winners. This award is only given to 10 professors in the state of Texas each year, and it is the premier teaching accolade in Texas higher education in recognition of a faculty's dedication and superior instruction at the collegiate level. In honor of this award, the Senate of the State of Texas 87th Legislature presented Dr. Baltina with a resolution of congratulations, and Senator Drew Springer presented him with a Texas flag that was flown at the state capitol. Dr. Baltina is an MSU Texas alum and exemplifies the values of MSU Texas in putting the needs and the learning of our students first. So he could not be here with us today, but congratulations, Chuck, and thank you for all you do for our students. Dr. Topliff. So I have no introduction to make, but I would like to make a couple of comments. First of all, President Hawkins is actually in Alabama speaking at the War College, which is, uh, if, you, if you know about his history, that, that is something that he is very passionate about. So 
he sends his regrets that he couldn't be here today, and uh, I'm a very poor stand-in for President Hawkins, but I appreciate that opportunity. Second thing, uh, i got to make a comment about Gordon Davis, too. Uh, I've known Gordon Davis for probably longer than either one of us want to admit, but uh, I actually did some videos for CEV back when I was actually on the faculty at Oklahoma State. So uh, Gordon has, been, has made a, a tremendous impact in, in the ag industry and, and beyond, and uh, so I really appreciate uh, him being honored here today. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The board will continue in open session and meet as a committee of the whole and meeting of the board. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the board meeting held August 5th through 6th, 2021 and September 1, 2021? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We will now consider items as a committee of the whole, and I would like to ask the vice chairman to preside over the committee of the whole. Mr. Griffin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What we'll be considering today is the consent agenda, which is in your uh, agenda book pages 1 through 34. And this, is, this involves and includes uh, ASU, TTU, TTU HSC, TTU HSC El Paso, the, the system, as well as TTUSA. And the items in consideration, as mentioned, on the consent agenda, items A through R, again listed on pages 1 through 34 of the agenda book, and the information agenda as well, listed on pages 35 through 45. I'll ask the board if there's any discussion of any of the items, either in the consent or the information agenda, that they would like to bring uh, before the board. And in light of that, also let me remind you that there's, if an item you would like discussed in further detail or voted on separately from the consent agenda, you may request that that item be moved to the committee of the whole. Is there any discussion on any items included? Hearing none, Mr. Chairman, then I move that the board approve the consent agenda and acknowledge its review of the information agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Mr. Griffin. Mr. Chairman, that concludes the items to be considered by the Committee of the Whole at this time. Thank you, Vice Chairman Griffin. Can I please present the schedule of upcoming meetings? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the schedule of upcoming meetings is printed in the agenda book as previously approved. Uh, the next scheduled meeting is uh, February 24th through 25th, and as a reminder, that will be a meeting that's currently scheduled in El, for El Paso. Uh, the details uh, of events surrounding that is still being worked out, but uh, President Lang has promised us that it will be a very uh, good, good time there. Uh, the next meeting, May 5th through 6th, uh, here in Lubbock, 2022, followed by the August 11th and 12th board meeting uh, scheduled for San Angelo and uh, wrapping up with November 17th and 18th back here in Lubbock. So just to note, this will be the first full year where we'll be adopting the four regular schedule format for our board meetings. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Next, we'll hear from the student government presidents. Kristen Kilpatrick, please present the SGA report for Angelo State University. Okay, hi, hello, um, good morning. Thank you all for having me. Um, okay, so I am Kristen Kilpatrick and I'm going to be representing Angelo State University once again <laughs> after a year and a half. So once again, we're in the 93rd session still, so this semester has been super successful. We've had lots of pieces of legislation get passed by our Senate this semester. Um, we've also had a lot of registered student organizations activated by our Senate, which is really great because that means that we're getting back to normal and having students meet on campus um, and talk about their interests. We just passed a pickleball club. So that's extra exciting. Uh, and then I am not going to be the student body president next year. It will actually be my vice president, Mr. Brady Floyd 
colleague who has presented here on my behalf before. Um, he's in this photo. And then his vice president choice is Miss Madison Wallace, who is the girl standing directly to my left in this photo. So um, I'm really excited for their plans for the upcoming semester. They're going to continue to uh, work on the initiatives that we have place for the 93rd session and also set some of their own. So I'm really excited for you guys to be able to meet them in January or February. Um, so yeah, that is us. So overview of our initiatives once again. So we are still working with the Rams Against Drug Driving Coalition and getting that established um, and making sure that we have representation from all student organizations and just student leaders. We're working on mental health uh, for our students and then our campus closet in the exploratory program. So. Rams Against Drunk Driving Coalition, our very own President Hawkins making an appearance in one of our videos that should be releasing soon on the Student Government Association website. Uh, and this girl pictured is very active in our Senate. This is Miss Bella Grace King, and she is an awesome leader and an awesome president of the RAD Coalition. Um, so she planned this entire event with our students where we got to go and interview them and ask questions about drunk driving and um, how it has affected students' lives personally and what they want to see from us um, and President Hawkins came to participate which is always really awesome so she has lots of big plans going on for the rest of the semester and for um, the rest of the year so I'm excited to see how this coalition grows as it gets more representation uh, from our leaders and working with other organizations like Greek Life and the Multicultural Center on campus to progress some events. Next is mental health. So this is always a huge priority in our Senate. So something that we definitely prioritize is making sure that student leaders are um, able and equipped to point anyone that is in a mental health crisis to the correct resources um, that are that need to be available to them. So Angela State University has a wonderful counseling services center and we always want to plug them and make sure that students know that these resources are available to them. So that is always a huge priority in our Senate and we had um, the director of counseling services come and give our senators a suicide prevention training. That was a two hour comprehensive suicide prevention training from the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. It was really comprehensive and it was really, really great. And um, I'm glad that he got to come and speak to our student leaders on campus. And then this actually influenced a lot of other student organizations to have him come speak and do suicide prevention trainings for different organizations like Rams Plus, which is an LGBTQ um, plus organization for our students. So that is really cool. Ron Hammonds asked me to thank you for dealing with mental health. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I appreciate that. And I will share that with counseling services in our Senate. Mm -hmm. So next is our campus closet. So as you can see pictured, this is the extent of our campus closet right now. So we're working on expanding that. Um, this semester mostly has been researching places and going to tour different rooms on campus to see if we can find a bigger space. Um, and originally we thought the university center, but we were trying to expand our horizons a little bit to just anywhere on campus that would be able to accommodate this. So we're still trying to find the perfect spot because we don't want to rush into anything. But but we do have a lot of the materials and we're ready to start doing clothing donation drives. We would like to first prioritize business formal or business casual attire so that students have clothing available options if they were to participate in different student organizations just because um, Student Government Association requires business formal for half of our meetings in the semester and I'm also in a sorority and we require business formal. Um, so we want students to be able to participate in organizations like those and not have a barrier if it's just cost of this type of clothing. So I've already been reached out to a lot about people that are wanting to donate clothing. <laughs> so that's always awesome. And then we also want to focus on winter clothing. So like warm winter jackets eventually. Um, so yeah. That is our campus closet. Next is the exploratory program. So this is something where we prioritized our first year freshman students. So most of these people are 18 or 17, 18 years old. And so we wanted to make their experience best by having our peer mentors from Student Government Association reach out with them and connect them with different um, organizations and just the best student life possible for them. Um, we did primarily um, prioritize our undeclared students, so students that have not yet chosen a major. So at the end of the semester, we're going to be reflecting and see if there was a improvement on students that have chosen their major at the end of the semester. And then we are going to do the same at the end of next semester after the spring. Um, 
because we had lots of events where, with the Student Life Office where we could have them come and meet with different academic programs and have pizza and meet other undeclared students. Um, so it's been very successful. We've gotten a lot of feedback from our students. And then at our continuity meeting that we had at the end of this semester with the peer mentors, particularly from Student Government Association, we talked about maybe expanding next semester to get more in touch with the local high schools in San Angelo, like juniors and seniors in the local high schools to see if we can invite them to programs like this and academic fairs and see, um, introduce them to not only Angelo State University, which is the best school, uh, but also just uh, different programs, even if they don't choose Angelo State, but they should. <laughs> So our other priorities uh, that we've been focusing on, we have Student Government Association SERBs or SGA SERBs, so we've been doing this monthly. We have done things like a blood drive, a cat food drive for our local cat coalition, and we have also raised money and sent items to victims of Hurricane Ida in Louisiana directly to organizations that are helping there, so that has been really successful. Our senators have really loved being involved in that. Next is our You Belong Here campaign, so this is a sign that we had made and we had our senators take pictures and explain why they chose Angelo State or why they feel like they belong at Angelo State. Uh, and we've been sharing that on social media and encouraging our senators to kind of adopt this as a slogan for our Student Government Association. Next is the Christmas tree lighting, which was started by a Student Government Association president a little bit before my time, <laughs> but we are still continuing on and our Christmas tree lighting this year is going to be in person again, which is really exciting because last year it was uh, virtual. So it's November 30th and our senators are really excited to help volunteer because we have all of our student organizations on campus come table and also just our community comes and we get to hang out with people in San Angelo. So very cool. And then we have our Student Government Association merch sales. So last year this was a huge success by selling shirts benefiting the Ram Family Scholarship, which is an endowed scholarship that is awarded at the Rammies every year. Uh, and so we're going to continue to sell Student Government Association merchandise. We have senators creating designs and that will be voted on in the first student government meeting of January, I believe to have a solidified design that we're going to be selling. Next, um, we have a student-led request of transparency. So this was a piece of legislation proposed by one of our senators who um, is just requesting faculty at Angelo State University to have some sort of grade update by midterm so that students can make informed decisions about so their academic choices on whether or not they want to drop the class or continue on with the class. Um, and so we've been working with our faculty senate and different faculty members um, to kind of get the ball rolling on this and see what we can do and what everyone else is comfortable with. So hopefully there will be an update with that next semester because it's been a lot of meetings. Can I make a comment? Yeah, of course. Okay, so I got to be there the day that they started this midterm thing and um, it was just phenomenal to watch the students sit there and be like, okay, this word, left, we left out blackboard. We need to make sure it's very specific so that when we present it to the professors, and the staff that we really are asking for what we want and not just some basic like, well, we want grades posted. So it was really awesome to watch them go through that process and like really think about what they were asking for and how they were going to present it and how the professors would take it and how the professors would be able to actually fulfill their request. So wonderful work on that. Thank you. And finally, we have revising the Election Commission document. So this is a pretty lengthy document that a lot of people don't like to read unless they're running for president or vice president. Uh, but some of the information is a little outdated for um, how best our election process could run. So we had our Rules of the Senate Committee go through and revise this Election Commission document. And then we have just recently set the Election Commission for next year. So in May, we will have a new student body president for the 94th session. So as you can see here, here's the sign I was talking about that says you belong here. And we, these are just some of our fun events that we've gotten to do with admissions and homecoming with Angela Serbs. We, our senators got to volunteer at the Girl Scout office and the Boy Scout office of Central Texas, which is always super cool. And then we have our, um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> we have our uh, Night walk, yes, I forgot the word night, which is embarrassing. But uh, so we go through the campus with our student services committee and we go look at the light fixtures and we make sure that the 
all of the light fixtures are working or if it, there's a, like a particularly dark place on campus, we go and make requests uh, so that our campus is well lit at night for students. And then honorable mention, Mr. Kaler up there, our past two homecoming kings have been Student Government Association Senators. So we are very proud of them. Hopefully the legacy continues. Um, and yeah, there's Mr. Brady Floyd, who's going to be our student body president next year. Uh, I just wanted to thank you all for your time and listening to me, to me today and for the past year and a half. It's been an honor being able to come to uh, Texas Tech in Lubbock to present all of Angela State University's uh, Student Government Association priorities and initiatives. Um, I'm sad that I'm graduating in 20 days, but I'm also excited and I just wanted to thank you all for the opportunity to come speak with you. And I'm excited to be joining Texas Tech with my Master of Public Administration soon. So yeah, thank you all. Thank you, Kristen, very much. Austin Strode, please present the SGA report for Midwestern State University. Good morning, everybody. My name is Austin Strode. Like you said, I'm going to be presenting the SGA report from Midwestern State University today. So a little bit about us as student government. You have me, the president. Um, I'm an economics major. I'm in my senior year, graduating next fall, though. Um, we have our vice president, Brittany Roberts, a junior sociology major. Our secretary, Gabriella, a junior economics major. We have 12 cabinet members, <clears throat> eight class senators, 50 student organizations registered, and then eight standing committees. And we have bi-monthly Senate meetings. So some of the projects that we've worked on have been the Women's Health Project. This is a pilot program set up in our student center to provide easy access to emergency feminine projects or products for women. We have our clothing bins don donation, which was set up by our predecessors, and we took that and ran with it. We set up clothing bin donations around campus near our library in one of our dorms to help uh, support a local teen emergency so shelter. We have non-traditional study nights, which actually started last night, and I'm eager to hear how it went. Um, these are just helping non-traditional students get some time, whether they have kids or other problems, to just take some time and study with other non-traditional students and make friends on campus. We partnered with our Women's Stand Council and the Wichita Falls Museum of Art at MSU. And then we also, this semester, did our QEP topic selection and implementation. Um, this is just student feedback to help uh, improve MSU in certain ways. So some of our um, other initiatives have been community, communication and outreach efforts. Um, one of the big ones that we did that we started back in the summer was rebranding all of our social media. Gabriella, our secretary, actually came on initially as our publicity chair. And once she got the secretary position, she took it and ran with it and improved our publicity by that much more. We've done Takeover Tuesdays, which have not been my favorite when I've gotten to go. I'm not big on the uh, spotlight. Uh, community chair, commu committee chair spotlights and then organization spotlights to help promote our organizations on campus. We're also doing outreach programs towards organizations that aren't involved in SGA, uh, different clubs and organizations that could benefit. And then we also had the uh, President's Picnic with Dr. Johnson. That was just a fun time that we helped sponsor to bring MSU together. So a little bit about MSU. I want to bring our culture with you. Um, we had our homecoming the week of October 25th through 30th. That included a lip sync competition. We had a picnic. Uh, we celebrated our mascot's 15th birthday. We had a Halloween party, a fish fry, a cardboard boat race, bonfire, and our homecoming court. And I have to pick on some of the members from my fraternity. Uh, the gentleman in the white shirt that's being dropped, um, I told him specifically that I was going to include him in this pr presentation. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. And then one of the last things that we, uh, or one of the few things that we did this semester was a values journey. I think most of, if not all, the other institution or schools in the Texas Tech system have done this. And I just want to present upon these here at the board meeting. We had people centered integrity, visionary, community, and connections. And being a part of this values journey, getting to go to the summit, participating in the town halls has been a really good experience. And I think it's really going to help shape MSU for the next few years as we go along. 
Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Chairman, may I make a comment? Austin has done a great job um, spearheading and informing the students of what it means for MSU to come into the tech system. I know when I first met him, he was like, I asked him, I said, how do the students feel? And he said, we're kind of concerned. What does this mean? And they were scared that they were going to lose their traditions. And Austin has done a great job of un like asking and understanding what's going on and what this means for MSU and Texas Tech, and then sharing that with his students and making them feel welcome to the tech system. He also got to participate in the values journey and is on the presidential search. So he's done a great job just leading MSU this year, especially with um, the transition into the system and with the new president. So thank you, Austin. Thank you, Keegan. Uh, Chairman, if I may make a comment as well, I'm sorry, I wasn't invited to do so, but uh, the students wonder whether, uh, besides the presentation, uh, what impact it has. And when you talked about the non-traditional study, and I turned to Lori and said, that's a great idea. Why can't we do that at our <laughs> institutions as well? So thank you, Austin, and the other students as well for uh, informing us of what we could do to be pre better presidents. And one thing I don't think I mentioned on that non-traditional study night was that it was initially thought up by our VP, Brittany Roberts. So I have to give her credit for that. She's done an amazing job with it. Well, thank you, Austin. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Austin's participation on the search committee, I think, is indicative of what this system tries to do as far as inclusivity is concerned. That's a that's a MSU Wichita Falls centric committee, and they're going to be uh, Regent Davis and I are assisting them really in making su suggestions and recommendations to the board. And Austin's going to play a key role in that process, but. I, I just want this body to know that it's a it's going to be an MSU Wichita Falls centric decision. Okay, it's it's not dictated from on high. It's it's we are including we're just in part of the process. But those folks are going to be very helpful in guiding us going forward. And I think it's indicative of how this system. It's not just words. It's action, and uh, we mean what we say when we say those traditions are important, and then they're not, they're, we are not going to allow them to lose their identity through this process, and this is indicative of that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Regent Griffin. Thank you, Austin, very much for that report. Next, Faisal al Hamoud will please present the SGA report for Texas Tech University. Good morning, everyone. Let's see how I'm going to do with the clicker today. Uh, all right. So um, first and foremost, I would like to thank the chair of the board, um, thank all of you all uh, for your time today, um, and I hope everyone's staying warm. So let's get going. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of start off with a few events that we did this uh, semester, some notable events. Uh, the first one was the Big 12 Conference. Um, this was incredible for so many reasons, but primarily because, uh, you know, we really could, well, because last year we weren't able to go, first of all. It was all on Zoom. Um, and so this is the first time we were able to actually meet a lot of the Big 12 officers. Um, and, and secondly, you know, we realized how actually, uh, how fast we do get the ball rolling in our system um, in relation to other schools. Um, we, we have the biggest Senate. We have usually the, the most pieces passed per year. Um, we have one of the most executive projects in relation to other schools. And I'm not saying this to put us on a scale, but it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a testament to, to our work ethic, um, not just in student government, but everyone that collaborates within student government. Um, it was really cool too. Uh, every school um, showed up except one, and Oklahoma came. So, uh, if you can. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I had another picture of, of 80 executive officers doing this, but um, we decide, decided not to put that on this presentation. Um, so, last week we had our town hall. Um, so, this town hall is really important because, um, you know, a lot of times you hear the expression it's not really about what you say, but it's about how you make people feel. Um, and, and so this town hall, um, you know, regardless of the discourse that occurred, um, super, super important that we had student organizations in the same room, at least knowing um, of each other's existence. Um, that is the first step. Um, and, and, you know, I, I told you all in August, one of our main priorities is to engage campus again. Um, so it was really cool um, just to have BSA, HSS, um, Silk, um, if in the bottom left, and also there, there's some of them here too. We have uh, our interns from our first year engagement programs. Also, if you guys haven't seen, um, Jarrett Lujan's here. Um, so, 
we are in, in the office are a bunch of 20 year olds, so it's really nice to have Jared around um, to give us some mental stability. So, um, also something we discussed um, in the earlier presentation is Safe Night Out T2 is something I worked on a lot as vice president um, as it pertains to sexual assault mitigation, um, how we can be proactive, um, all these things. And one of the things we mentioned were uh, we, we needed to start off with a bar that was a little bit more low key, um, a bar that um, is, is maybe, you know, an older, more mature demographic um, so that people can kind of generally accept it and then start moving into bars that are more relevant to our campus, which we started doing. So on November 9th, we had our, our first public event where we were training bouncers um, for the Safe Night Out T2 program. Now the next step is to contact some of the more um, the closer bars, so like crickets, chimneys. Um, so uh, because we wanted to legitimize it and give it some credibility before going to a bunch to a lot of bars, um, so they don't think you know, you know we're not serious about our work. So this is awesome. Um, th thank you for Rise for making that graphic. I think it's a really cool graphic. It's a shot glass, and then it's a heart on top of it to you know protection. Anyways. Um, in August, we f we collaborated with the Texas Tech System Health Tank and Public Health Think Tank. Uh, Think tank, um, and uh, really, that's all. Mainly, what that's about is, um, you know, COVID um, and this global pandemic has. I don't know if you guys have heard COVID. So um, this global pandemic has really like illuminated to us that um, uh, there's there's a lot of subjectivity in the realm of medicine, um, and 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 that's dangerous because this is medicine. This is health, um, and so we need our we need everybody who uh, who is going to be. Um, you know, impacted by policy changes. We need people who are going to be accessing resources at their need um, to have a voice when it comes to this. Um, so, uh, you know, after a few uh, early meetings, a lot of these people in this picture are um, senators from SGA and med school students. Um, and some of them are leaders of this think tank. Um, and they got approval from the city as well as the university to have a vaccine clinic right outside the Jones at t Stadium um, on the game of, it was uh, Kansas State. I don't, I don't like that day. We don't have to think about it, but that, this was cool. We vaccinated over 50 people. Um, I think 10 of them were over 60 years old. So really, really cool. And there were some boosters there too. So um, this is a little kind of a smaller thing. Uh, so I just I I know that in 10 or 15 years from now, especially as, as the peak oil price um, gets closer, um, I, I'll, I would really regret it if if I didn't lay any sort of if we didn't lay any sort of groundwork uh, when it came to sustainability, as it's not really um, a main priority on our campus. Uh, so um, with that being said, we've had some some pretty cool results this, uh, so far this semester. Um, one of them being that the TT Recycling Center um, reopened, um, and or it was our compass system uh, reopened, and then the recy recycling center was open. Um, that that was not I'm not not taking credit for that at all, uh, but it was it was all part of like a conversation with a lot of different. Uh, moving people um, within this effort, and, and it's really cool to see to see people actually following through with their efforts on this. Um, up next with sustainability, we want to want to see if we can um, you know look at the logistics uh, of of having reusable cups um, that students can pay with their tuition, um, so that they don't have to keep getting new cups. Um, some, you know things along that line. Put a Texas Tech logo on it, something like that. So, um, and I. I a lot of a lot of uh, the other presentations, and uh, I think if you may have noticed, one of the key uh, key areas of our work in student advocacy is transparency. Um, it, and it seems so simple um, to, to be transparent, but it's so much easier said than done. Um, and so we're we're doing a lot in that realm. Um, so Jarrett is doing a lot in that realm too. Um, so he has established the first Hispanic caucus on our campus, um, and as a in his HSI, um, I believe over 25 percent of our of our university is Hispanic. Um, it is so so crucial um, to give them as well a voice um, when it comes to anything pertaining to their lives on Texas Tech's campus. Um, so that was the first one. So really cool. Um, and then with that, uh, he also formed the um, uh, the graduate assembly uh, like. The unification. Um, so a big problem with the graduate students and as well as our undergraduate students is there are so many different moving parts, moving factions within campus, so many different groups, different people, different styles of life. Um, and, and it's really hard to have cohesive conversation. Um, it's, you know, um, everyone has always got something on a, on a different day. So the, if you see the ambassador's program, um, establishment of the first Hispanic caucus, and as well as the um, graduate assembly, 
all of these um, are designed um, to just make communication more efficient. Um, so uh, the ambassador's program is we, we have 20 students who applied and got accepted. Um, and uh, previously our ambassador's program, the bylaws were not very specific. It just said to improve, to improve and unite the uh, school spirit. So it wasn't really that effective because no one knew what to do. Um, so we've divided up these 20 participants um, based on the categorization of different student orgs. So we have STEM orgs. So if you're in robotics or if you're in something like that, you're, you'd be a STEM org. Um, if you're, you know, let's say a social org like HSS, BSA, um, we're Having these ambassadors and representatives meet up with them bi-weekly um, and then report back to the executive leadership and report back to the Senate so that we kind of have a better idea as to, as to what people are really doing. Um, if you see that Excel sheet in the background, this is kind of one of my ideas. Um, after being SGA for so long, um, again, one of the hardest things to do as a student advocate is to understand your parameters, to understand your boundaries. Um, what is too much, what's too little, and what's just right? And it's really difficult to stay in that just right area in a moving world of so many moving variables. So this is hopefully, you know, um, working with our first year students um, to make it more aesthetically pleasing because I'm not organized. Um, so, so I don't want people to just look at a bunch of things. But really this, this idea is this. Um, I want to have a huge database um, from, from things we've done five years ago, 10 years ago, um, all the way leading up to today and to tomorrow. Um, and each thing will be categorized. So for example, safety. Um, something I was going to tell you about safety, I'll just tell you now. Uh, Noel Sloan had a, a, a safety committee, an amazing safety committee, um, that had to do with getting, again, vo voices in the same room and expressing the idea that um, safety is not just uh, one aspect. It's not just the physical aspect. It's also the mental health aspect. Um, so we gathered um, a lot of different departments in one room um, to see how we can um, centralize and, and make reporting um, when it comes to crimes, when it comes to um, just any, any time someone's safety is violated, um, how can reporting be made easier? The average student doesn't really know where to go right now if, if there's something were to happen um, because you know links and, and resources to report safety concerns are everywhere. Um, it's not in one area. So let's take that for example. Um, so everything that has to do with safety would be under that. And then you say, are there Senate pieces for this? What Senate pieces? Um, Who did you meet with? How many times did you meet with them? Um, how were the meetings like? What was the outcome of the meeting? Did you follow up with them? These are really important things that if you don't have a whole lot of experience in a public institution, you don't really understand why that's super important. Um, it, it will eliminate redundancies. Um, it, so, so I hope, I hope uh, this is taken seriously and we actually do populate this as time goes by. Um, so yeah, another thing with transparency, uh, Jarrett is doing something called Coffee with the GVP, where he's, um, again, following up with his words and with action um, and, and meeting with his graduate students. Uh, and, um, and yeah, uh, we're planning on doing SGA day. Um, so a, problem, a little problem is that not a whole lot of people know about our, our elections. Um, we have about you know three to four thousand participants out of forty thousand. So we want to get more more voices involved within our elections and, and, know, and let people know of the opportunities. Um, and then lastly, we're we're in the midst of forming an SGA alumni organization. Um, so this the reason for this is um, we. We have so many amazing individuals who who were in SGA who graduated um, that no one knows anymore, and they're in their in their. Their experience is lost as an SGA leader. Um, small little example, the student body president a few years ago, um, I don't know if you all remember Ben Sharp, um, he just graduated from Duke Law School. Um, and I'm trying to go to law school, um, and, and I didn't know that he went to Duke until like last week. I mean, how helpful would it have been for me to talk to him at, you know, you know stake my house at, all that stuff. So uh, this is kind of the same opportunity that everyone else in SGA, within SGA should have, because we all have su such a common denominator in, in ambition and passion. So um, sorry for taking so much of your time once again, uh, but if anyone has an, it doesn't have any questions, then that is, wraps up my uh, presentation. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Bernardo Gonzalez, please present your SGA report for the Health Science Center. All right, well, well good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. It's, it's great getting to see all of you again and having the opportunity to share with you all some of the things our Student Government Association at the Health Sciences Center has been up to. Um, my name is Bernardo Gonzalez. I'm a second year medical student here in the Lubbock campus and currently serve as the TTUHSC student body president. Uh, through today's presentation, I hope to follow up with you all regarding my updates from the August meeting, uh, discuss SGA's involvement in key decision making and events around campus, and talk about some of the discussions and legislation pieces that have been worked upon by our Senate. So at the August meeting, 
I mentioned to you all our campus is returning to 100% capacity and thus felt it was necessary to update you all that since August 30th, shortly thereafter, um, we, we ended up putting, placing a, a limit of 25% occupancy with the exceptions listed above. Um, unfortunately, the number of COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations continued to rise and our leaders make, had to make sure to take action. Uh, the school is working diligently to ensure our education to our students isn't sacrificed, however, and are ensuring our students who prefer the in-person instruction are still able to have that option available to them. Um, on another note, our institution had been on a nationwide search for our first uh, VP of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, with the winner actually being announced earlier this morning, so congrats to uh, Ms. Randall. But something really cool the school actually did was they, they, uh, they allowed our SGA to actively participate in contributing to this final decision. So, um, so that was really, really awesome of them. Uh, the two individuals, oh, sorry. The two individuals, both of them, you know, outstanding individuals um, who made the final round were, were each allotted an hour to spend time with us, uh, presenting themselves, answering questions, and asking questions. Um, and those presents were then uh, emailed an evaluation form to submit with their input to, to, towards the decision makers. Um, being given this opportunity uh, brought me back to our provost uh, and chief academic officer, Dr. Diagostino, telling us uh, at our senator orientation that he wants us to be the most student-centric health sciences center in the country. And even though this search wasn't entirely directly from his office, uh, it showed us the type of, of influence he's having, or perhaps just how well his vision aligns with that of, of our university. As well as this, his office and that of Dr. Rice Spearman are in regular contact with us and are actively seeking our input. Um, it, it's truly uh, admirable, you know, seeing, seeing them to lead the next generation of healthcare providers and, and research scientists. Earlier this month, we had our annual interprofessional education symposium where students from all our campuses offered a TTUHSC. Uh, all, all of our campuses heard from, from our speaker, Dr. Okalami. Um, in the interest of time, I won't go into much of his talk, but I highly encourage you all to listen to his TED Talks or read his story if you haven't. Um, afterwards, there was several discussion and problem solving activities that were actually facilitated in large part by our Senate. Um, earlier that week, we had the event coordinator come in and speak as our, our, as our guest. Uh, she promoted the event, um, introduced, introduced us to his mission, invited, and, and eventually invited us to serve as group facilitators. We ended up having a great turnout there from our Senate and helped the event go, go smoothly. Our Senate meetings have produced a lot of productive discussion and, and work towards legislation. The school's quality enhancement plan was introduced to them and, and initiative has been taken towards contributing to the eight dimensions of wellness, particularly that of social, financial, and emotional wellness. We have senators working towards improving accessibility for those with disabilities. We're continuing to promote collegiality and camaraderie across our programs. And have senators working with administration on the Odessa campus promoting uh, legislation benefiting uh, rural health care. Further, our executive officers are, are all working towards increasing collaboration within our Senate. We created an active group chat for all of us, for all of us to talk in. Uh, we made a Google document that has all our senators um, access to, to add ideas onto, as well as add their names and existing ones to express their inter interest in contributing to these motions. Um, and and we, you know, we're always encouraging acting participation within our meetings. Uh, I believe that concludes my presentation, but I'd love to uh, take the time to answer any questions, comments, or concerns. Bernardo, I just want to add also that the IP event, the Interprofessional Education event that was hosted last, last just a few weeks ago, had over 1,700 participants, and those participants included not just students from our six campuses, but other universities and community colleges across the state of Texas, and it is now the largest IP event in the state of Texas for health professionals. Great work, Bernardo. Glad yes, you were involved. Thank you. Thank you, Bernardo. 
Next, Alexa Guerrero, please present your SGA report for TTUHSC El Paso. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alexa, and I am the Student Government Association President from Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center, El Paso. So we had our annual fall fiesta to celebrate our community and welcome back our students. Bring this down a little bit. Um, we held our annual fall fiesta in September. One of our main goals this year was to find new ways to support other student organizations. So during this event, we gave student organizations the opportunity to fundraise and to increase their student engagement and also put a little more money in their pockets. And then in order to create accountability and transparency within our student body, we have been able to translate our newly established legislative process into other committees that we are a part of. One of them being the Student Service um, Fee Advisory Committee, where we vote on funding for student organization events outside of SGA. So in October, the Student Wellness Committee um, came to us with a campus-wide flag football event. Um, one of our other main goals this year was to find ways to promote health and wellness on campus. So of course, we couldn't say no to this event. And um, a lot of our VPs and senators helped with the planning of this event. And um, just a funny story, um, the picture in the bottom is, that's my VP of Finance. And that is I who threw that interception. Um, so uh, I will be sticking to um, my biomedical sciences, and I will not be going pro anytime soon. Um, so then up next, we have on track with health and wellness. Um, we wanted to find ways to also promote mental health. Um, so back in September, it was National Suicide Prevention Month, and it was also World Mental Health Day. Um, so we had an all-day event where we collaborated with the Office of Student Wellness and Engagement, and we gave out stress relief books, and we provided resources on the counseling services that we have on campus and within the community. We also provided um, some comfort food. But my favorite aspect of this event was we had a board. And on this board, students could share their stories. Um, students could respond to the stories that were posted on this board, or they could leave words of encouragement. And I think it's really important for us to uplift each other within the student body. And I think also, as future healthcare professionals, it's important for us to try, and our, try our best to reduce the stigma that is attached to mental health. Um, so this was a really amazing event put on um, by SGA. And then we have Corazón de Oro, which is our service event, which means heart of gold. And I think it's very fitting. So this was our service event that was two months long. We paired with the El Paso Food Bank closest to the border. Um, we volunteered every Saturday where we packed and handed out food to families within the El Paso community. Um, during our shifts, we would hand out about um, 1,000 packed boxes of groceries to families within the community. And I had the opportunity to volunteer one of the Saturdays. And I think it's honestly, when you show up, it's really heartbreaking when you see the line that's wrapped all the way around the building and kind of extending all the way to the highway. But I really have to commend um, my peers and student body for showing up for this event because every Saturday, every volunteer slot was always full. And they would always stay late if the food bank needed help. And so I think I could really commend them on their eagerness and compassion to serve the El Paso community. And for the future, we do have our Thanksgiving luncheon that happened this past Wednesday, um, COVID friendly, of course. In December, we have our donation drive and we're planning on pairing with a couple of children's shelters within the El Paso community. We have our senator projects and I'm really excited for those. We have a lot of senators that are really eager to serve the student body. Our spring service event that is in the works, our leadership conference. And then in February, we will be having our diversity week with a theme of identity and self-love. And that is all that I have for you all today. Um, I wanted to um, thank you. It's always such an honor to come from El Paso to present. And then I wanted to give a special thank you to the board on behalf of the TTUHSC El Paso student body. Thank you so much for all of your work and support to make sure that we have the resources that we need to ensure our academic careers and later um, careers. So thank you so much. Alexa, thank you very much. Where, where are you in your degree plan? Where? So I'm in my last year in the graduate program. So I'll be graduating in May. Okay. Well, 
we look forward to that. Thank you. Oh, yes, we'll also see you in February in the beautiful Sun City. So we're excited to have you all. <laughs> uh, the final item of business is announcements. There are no announcements at this time. Therefore, do I hear a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This meeting of the Board of Regents of Texas Tech University stands adjourned. Thank you for your participation. Oh, yeah.